Gators, what's up? It's Allie Hardesty and today's video is going to be a story time, kind of like a rant style story time because this happened very recently and it made me very, very angry. So without further ado, let's just get into this video. Before I really, really start rolling with this thing, I wanna give you some background information. I moved to California to go to college two years ago, but before that I did live in California majority of my life, like fourth grade up until my junior year. So I lived in Ohio in that short little time frame for like 11 months, graduated there, moved back for college, right? So in that time frame, I did not actually go ahead and change my driver's license because I didn't feel the need to, I knew I was going to move back, but my car plates, like the license plates on my actual vehicle, I did just because if I were to move back to California, which I obviously did, I didn't know whether or not I was going to still have my car, if I was going to drive it here, if I was going to ship it here, or if I was just going to sell it and get a new car in California. So my plates were in fact changed to Ohio license plates when moving there. When I moved back, for college, a couple years ago, fun fact, my mom and I actually drove my car across country to California. I still had those Ohio plates, right? So this is kind of where the story begins. My mom gets a letter in the mail a couple weeks ago from, it was the DMV or the Reading Police Department, something like that. They were basically letting my parents know because the car is registered in my dad's name who lives in Ohio because it has Ohio registration, Ohio license plates. It's my dad's car who lives in Ohio. The letter was sent to him saying that I basically needed to have it registered in California by the end of this year, by 2018. So technically I still had a while to go ahead and do that. I was exempt from doing that before hand for a number of reasons, one being the college that I go to, two being the fact that I was an out of state resident, like I was paying out of state tuition all last year. Also the fact that it's not even technically my car, it is my dad's and he resides in Ohio. And I mean, I just kind of established residency very, very recently, but I still was not in any legal position to where I had to change the plates, if that makes sense. So my dad calls me and he tells me that I need to go over to the DMV and take care of this. At first I was a little bit nervous because I was like, I thought I didn't have to change the plates because when I moved here, I asked my parents specifically if I needed to do that because I knew that I changed them when I moved to Ohio. And my parents were like, no, it's fine. I had like some sticker that went on my plate indicating that I was exempt from like changing it right away because I was not technically a resident. I don't really know all the details. All I know is that I asked my parents, they told me I did not have to change it. So I never really worried about it. It. So I was like, I'm not gonna have to pay any fees, right? And they're like, no, you're good. You just have to pay the registration. This is around finals week, basically when I went over the first time, I had like two weeks where it was basically exams. So in other words, when I had to go over to the DMV and take care of this, I had a lot of other things I would have much rather have been doing. I head over to the DMV. I just wanna get it taken care of, get it out of the way. I waited in the super long line that the DMVs always have. And if you've ever been to the DMV, you know it's just stressful in general. It's not good vibes. Everyone there hates their life. You're waiting forever. So I was doing that. I waited in one line. Line, then I had to wait in another line and then I had to go get my car checked They had to like make sure everything was working properly, which it was and then I got a number and I sat down And I waited for like an hour or two for my number to be called and then when it was called I went up to the window of which my number was called at I'm talking to the guy I'm explaining that I want my car to be registered in both California and Ohio So a multi-state registration, right? That's the thing All I had to do was pay the fee and then move on with my life And so then I'd have plates that were both cool in Ohio and California if that makes sense So I'm telling this guy that and he pulls up my information my file he's typing stuff in and he's like oh actually you have to pay fees for the past two years and he's explaining to me like because I moved here and I never registered the car that I owe all this money blah 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 he's telling me it's gonna be a lot of money and he's being kind of rude and I'm at this point thinking that maybe my parents missed something and that I'm gonna have to pay all this money so I'm mad and so I call my dad and I'm telling him like I have to pay all this money now, what the heck? Because like I said, when I moved here, I asked my parents and they told me I was good to go. And yeah, I could have looked into that myself for sure, but my parents have moved around a lot and so have I my whole life. So I assumed that they knew what they were talking about and they ended up knowing exactly what they were talking about. This was the DMV's fault. So my dad's explaining to me, no, you do not have to pay those fees. Do not pay those fees. I don't know why they're saying that to you. Explain to them this, this, and this. So I did, I proceeded to tell him I was not a resident. This car is registered in Ohio. It's my dad's vehicle, technically. It's underneath his name, blah, 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 all the details. I tell them that my dad actually talked on the phone with the Reading police officer who told my dad I did not have to pay any fees and that I just needed to go and take care of it before the end of this year. The guy at the DMV was just like, yeah, you're gonna owe this much money. So rude, didn't care, wasn't even listening to me. And then he just proceeded to try and argue with me. He was like, since you have been a resident of California for two years now, you need to pay two years worth of fees. And I was like, no, 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 here's the thing. 
I have not been a resident for two years. I haven't even been a resident for one year fully yet because I was paying out of state tuition. Trust me, I wish I was a resident for two years. I wouldn't have had to pay insane more amounts of tuition than the average California resident because I technically lost my residency when I lived in another state for 11 months. It doesn't work like that. Like you can't just hop state to state and get residency like that. You have to earn it. And I know a lot about this because I did move from out of state. So I know that I had to register to vote. Do things that prove that you were in the state for X amount of time and you do get your residency at least in my county after a year and one day of living there but in other counties it takes like two years so it just depends but point blank I was just not a resident of California like at all and even if I was just the way it was all working I was exempt from paying any fees because it was registered in Ohio it was my dad's car I drove like the way everything was working out and I don't know if this is gonna make sense in the video but basically point blank just know I didn't have to pay these fees they were trying to charge me an insane amount of money like 800 or 900 dollars so I'm texting my dad this I'm just like hey uh, he's not listening to me he's telling me I still owe this amount of money I'm very confused I tried explaining it to him and my dad's like okay ask for his supervisor so I was like may I please speak to your supervisor I'm being super polite at this point I'm just kind of of coming off like I'm confused even though I knew I was right I was still trying to give him the respect and listen to him but be very like no I'm not paying these fees he gets a supervisor she's this lady who's super freaking rude like right off the bat she's just like okay so you don't think that you have to pay these fees listen here sweetheart you do you can't come into our state and not pay fees and not switch your plates and registration just because you're from a different state and I was like oh my god I'm not saying that I'm just saying I would like to establish multi-state um plates now because I have to do so by the end of this year. I would like to just get it over with now. I'll pay the registration. I'll pay anything going forward, but I'm not paying these late fees for two years because I wasn't a resident. And I know for a fact that I don't have to because I went to school as an out of state resident and my dad spoke to the police officer from the DMV, etc. And the lady, she just didn't care. She was just, mm, oh, okay. Well, you're not going to walk out of here without paying these fees. <sighs> I start to get heated, right? I start to get so freaking pissed because I'm just like already stressed out. I already don't want to be there. I already want to go home and study and take care of my exam. So I'm explaining to her again, the same thing that I explained to the first guy. I'm just like, look, I don't have to pay these fees. I'm not supposed to pay these fees. My parents just got a letter saying that this is no longer exempt by the end of this year. So I need to register in California now. I would like to have it registered in both states, however, because I am back and forth a lot of the time. My family lives in Ohio. I live here now but I just got res, actually, I don't even know if I technically have residency. I just didn't have to pay out of state this year, thankfully, because I paid it all last year, if that makes sense. But like, still, I did not have to change my plates until 2018. She's not listening to me at all. She actually starts laughing in my face. She was like, okay, well, um, you're not gonna walk out of here without paying the fees that you owe, so good luck with that. I asked them if they can speak to my dad on the phone because I'm like, all right, I'll just have my dad handle this, and they tell me that they can't speak to anyone on the phone, they can only talk to me. So I'm texting my dad all this, and he's sending me screenshots and pictures of the letter that he got in the mail saying specifically, and I quote, like, I'm exempt, exempt from paying any sort of fees. I just need to register it in the state by the end of this year. It was May when this happened. It's still May. It's still my, I don't know when I'll post this video, but I had ample amount of time to go ahead and do this. I was just trying to get it over with right then and there, so I didn't have to worry about it anymore. I'm showing them the screenshots. I'm showing them the picture of the letter from the police officer and the statement and all that, and they didn't care. They weren't listening. They just kept telling me I still had to pay that total, so I'm telling my dad this, and he's like, all right, get their names for me. Like, what are their names? So I'm like, hey, what's your name again? And he's like, uh, um, actually, we can't tell you that. We're not gonna tell you our names. And I was like, okay, what's your supervisor's name? And at this point, she wasn't standing there anymore. She had been walking around. And she was being so passive aggressive this whole time, mind you. The guy at the front counter, he's just like, uh, we actually can't tell you that either. And then also keep in mind, if you've ever been to the DMV, you know it's a very big room with a lot of crowded little windows. So there's people everywhere. We're starting to cause a scene at this point. Like both of our voices are being raised, especially me and the supervisor when she was there and she ended up coming back. So there was this couple right next to me on the left and they're looking over like, damn, shit's about to go down because I was like laying it out for him. So everyone's looking over. I'm asking for his name, his supervisor's name. They won't give me their names. And then the lady next to him in the booth where the couple was at, where they were like watching along with everybody else in the waiting room, everyone's sitting down 
was watching. She's like, okay, you can't give out the supervisor's name, but you can give out her number, like her account number, her ID number or something like that. And I'm just like, what am I supposed to do with that information? But whatever. So they gave me her ID number. Don't know if that's a real thing or not. I've never heard of it, but they obviously knew that I was going to complain at that point. They were mocking me. They were making fun of me. They weren't listening to me. They were trying to make me pay all these fees. And I'm the type of person, like if I make a mistake, if I owe something, have a ticket, I need to, you know, pay my dues. I will do that. But this was a situation where I knew for a fact, I did not need to pay the $800, $900. So I just wasn't going to. Also, I'm stubborn to a sense, but when it comes to arguing with people, I just won't do it. I'll just take the L. But since I was going to have to pay, close to $1,000, I was obviously going to stand my case and be like, no, I'm right, you're wrong, I'm not paying this money because there was like fees to be paid. So I'm standing there tapping my foot, just like texting my dad. I'm basically like that meme where the guy's like, <laughs> except for I wasn't on the phone with my dad, I was texting him. So they're getting a little bit flustered, not necessarily the supervisor because she was just walking around like, but the guy at the table, you can tell that he was just like, I don't want to lose my job. Like this girl's probably low key right, but I don't want to say that because I'm scared of my boss because she was like a mean lady. And at this point they had my license, like they took my driver's license. And so he's inputting it into the computer and he's like adding up the total for other stuff that I owe. And then the supervisor comes back over and she's like, let me see her driver's license, snatches it out of the guy's hand. And she's like, oh, so you got your license in 2014? And I was like, yeah, and? And she's like, well, then you should actually be paying fees all the way from 2014 till now, which is 2017. And I was like, are you dumb? I lived in Ohio from 2014 to 2015. And I was paying California registration on the vehicle at that time when I was living in California. Like the driver's license is irrelevant. That doesn't make any sense. You can literally see in there that I was paying registration, whether it was in California or Ohio. The year that I got my license has nothing to do with this. And she was telling me like, yeah, maybe you don't have to pay the police officers any money, but you do have to pay the DMV. Cause I was telling her that my dad talked to the police officer and she just didn't care at all. But when she started to say that I was gonna pay fees for three years since I got my license, which had nothing to do with the plates on my car and me being out of state resident, I got so mad. At this point, she and I are both like full level snapping at each other back and forth. I was so nice up until this point. I was being so respectful, but now she's just popping off saying that I owe even more fees on top of the fees I was already gonna have to pay, which I didn't have to pay in the first place. I wasn't coming to the DMV to pay any fees. I was just going to pay the registration. So she's like, oh yeah, John, whatever his name was. I don't know his freaking name. Yeah, make sure you add up 2014 on top of that number as well. And I'm like, look, I was not a resident in California. I was a resident of Ohio. That's why my plates say Ohio on them. That's why I have the sticker on top of them saying that I am exempt because I am exempt because of the college I went to and the car is in my dad's name who lives in Ohio, who resides in Ohio. So I'm texting my dad and he's just like, okay, leave, just leave, go home. I will call the police officer again and take care of this and you can go back another day when you have more time, when you don't have finals. And I was like, yeah, I would, except they have my driver's license and they're not giving me it back. Because I was at this point basically shouting over the table like, can I please have my license back? I'd like to leave now. And he's just like, hold on, we're gonna add up your total. And I was like, no, I'm not paying any fees. I would like my license back and I would like to leave now. I will be back next time with the police officer. And he just wasn't giving it back to me as well as my registration and all the other paperwork I had already handed him. So my dad's like, start recording them. So I took out my phone. I started recording them at the window. I didn't know if they could really tell if I was recording or not because I was trying to be low key about it, but it was still kind of obvious because I mean, who texts this way? Like, let's be real, like no one really does that. And so again, don't really know if the girl, like the supervisor knew I was recording, but the guy definitely Definitely caught on towards the end. Fees are going to be picked up from 8 15. 15. Mm -hmm. She's saying that's when you were a resident for the vehicle. I was not a resident in okay. 2015. So before you leave here, before you leave here, you could chat with her because that's what she wants me to put here. So you need to talk to her because that's what she's saying that the fees are due. Okay. Okay. So then he starts basically kissing my ass, being like, I'm really sorry, ma'am. It's not up to me. It's up to my supervisor. And I'm just like, no, it's not. Like, do your job. Like, I think you and I both know that I'm right. I didn't tell him this, but I was just like, whatever. And he's like, yeah, you could go talk to her if you want because she's the only one who has authority to do blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, I'm not gonna continue to stand here at the DMV and argue with your supervisor for your entertainment as well as everybody else's because everyone was watching. Like this got pretty escalated pretty fast. I was like, if I talk to her right now, we're just gonna continue to argue and it's pretty clear that she's not going to let me walk out of here without paying the fees or telling me that I still owe the money on these fees. So long story short, I leave, I call my dad, I tell him everything, which he was already pretty up to date on because I had been texting him and literally sending him videos and whatnot. And he's like, okay, I'm gonna talk to the police officer. We'll take care of this, I'll let you know. And then you can go back with the police officer or meet him there or something and I was like 
for sure. So a week goes by, then my dad texts me and he's like, hey, the police officer guy that I talked to, I talked to him again. He said again that you should not have to pay any fees and that these people at the DMV do this to people all the time. And so he's gonna go there and help you out and talk to them for you. He will be there from this time to this time. So just go in, talk to him, and then go up to the window with him. So I head over to the DMV. This time my best friend Addie comes with me because I told her, I was like, I can't do this again alone. Like, I need you for moral support, please. Plus, I'm gonna be waiting there forever and I'm just gonna get really bored. So we went back, we meet up with the guy, and I explained to him, and he's like, Yeah, when they call you up to the window, just come get me. We wait in a line, we wait in another line, and then I get called up to the window. And so I have Addie go and get the police officer because we didn't know when we were going to be called, so I didn't really get him in advance. So I'm at the window talking to this lady, and she's like, Oh, so you're the troublemaker, and like snickering to herself. And I'm like, Okay, cool. So they've definitely talked about me because apparently it was like a big deal when me and that lady were arguing. Like, I thought maybe a little bit of it was in my head because it was the situation I was dealing with that everyone was looking, but no, definitely it was a thing that all of them were talking about when I left because she knew exactly who I was when I walked up. She's like, you're the troublemaker. And I was like, I guess so. I'm the one who's not going to pay all the fees I don't owe. So then when Addie walks over with the police officer, he's smiling. He's looking at her like walking over, being all jolly, Mr. Cop. And she's like talking to herself saying, He's not gonna get what he wants. I don't know why he's so happy right now. And I was like, what is wrong with you? Like, calm down, you're taking your job way too seriously. So he comes over and then she starts flirting with him immediately. She's like, hey officer, so what brings you over here today? I already told this young lady that she's not going to walk out of here without paying the fees that she owes. And he's like, oh, I'm just taking care of Allie. She's one of my kids, like in the sense that he talked to my dad and he was like, gonna have my back and take care of me because I didn't need to pay these fees. And so he's telling her that and she's like, yeah, well, what Allison doesn't seem to understand is that she owes this amount of money because she came here from out of state. That doesn't matter. She still owes the DMV money. And the police officer, he's just like flirting her up, chatting like, huh, well, Linda or whatever her name was. And he's like, Linda, actually, Allison is exempt because this, this, and this. He tells her the same exact thing I've already explained to now three different people at the DMV who all acted like I was insane. And she goes, Oh, oh, is that so? Oh, I didn't understand. Are you sure that's how it works? Okay, we'll take care of that right away. I was livid. And she and I exchanged eye contact and I was just like, really? Really? Is that all this took was the cop to flirt with you a little bit and now you're gonna like waive the fees that I should have had to pay anyways? He pulled out the handbook like electronically on the screen. He was like, look up that like on this page right there. Like, how do you not know this stuff? You work at the DMV. And she was like, ah, silly me. And Addie, I'm texting her at this point because she's sitting in the waiting room, like right behind me. And I was like, dude, this chick has the biggest crush on this cop right now. Like, I can't, this is disgusting. Like she was trying so hard to flirt with him. Like, is this how older people flirt? Like, ew. And Addie's like, yeah, when he walked over, all the ladies like turned their head and stuff. I didn't think he was super attractive. Like he was bald, but I mean, I could see if you're like 40, he was pretty ripped and he had like a nice smile and he was just like, flirting with all the DMV people. So they were all like, oh my God, let me drop my panties and like wave all these fees for all the kids that he says to wave fees for. So she's stalling honestly with the process of like getting rid of all the stuff I owe that I don't really owe just so he can stay there so she can continue to talk to him. So she's just like, so what have you been up to? What are you doing out there passing out those flyers? Cause he was giving out flyers for like motorcycle safety awareness or something. I don't even know. I was so grossed out. I was just like, can you not do this right in front of me? She was literally like bending over the computer and her voice got so high pitched when he came over. She was batting her eyes and just trying to be all cute and play dumb. Like she didn't understand how to work the system. So he would help her out. And I was just like this lady, you know how much stress and trouble and time. And I literally cried after the first time I was there. I don't know if I mentioned that. I literally bawled my eyes out in the car. I was so frustrated. Like this is all it took. This is all it took was some hot, hunky 40 year old police officer to walk over and tell her exactly what I already told her. Again, that's why I kind of feel like it was a I'm younger thing. Cause I didn't sound uneducated. I didn't not know what I was talking about. I was very informed of like what I needed to say to them. So yeah, basically the police officer helps her to change everything. And then she tells me that I'm good to go. I end up paying like 200 or $300, which is like a lot less than I was supposed to pay. That's fine. That was for the registration and stuff. DMVs are very stressful. I'm so glad that I will probably never have to go into one of those things again at least for a very long time until I have to renew my license or something like that. So if you guys like the story, be sure to leave me a big thumbs up. Leave me a comment below if you've ever had a similar experience and subscribe to my channel if you are new here. Turn on post notifications. Check out my Patreon for exclusive videos and photo shoots, etc. that you cannot see on my public social medias. Also, I have Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and you now where I broadcast every single day. I'll have those links on the screen and I will see you guys in the next video. Later, alligators.